This is the 4-8 to 4-10 review. Calculators are not allowed. This is number six, the free response problem. So part A says that we know the velocity at a given time when time is greater than zero, and we want to find the acceleration. So in order to get the acceleration when we know the velocity, we need to take a derivative. So acceleration will be the derivative of that velocity which will be a zero plus move through the two hit the sine derivative of sine is cosine of the inside unchanged times the derivative of the inside so you could leave it like this or you can simplify it and get a 10 pi times a cosine of 5 pi times t part b asks for all the values for which the particle is at rest so the particle is at rest when the velocity is zero. So that means we're solving for when 1 plus 2 sine of 5 pi t is equal to zero. So we have a negative 1 equals a 2 sine of 5 pi t and we have a sine of 5 pi t equals a negative 1 half. So what we need to do is think about our unit circle. So on the unit circle we want the y coordinate which is representative of the sine to be a negative 1 half. So that will happen here and here. So this one is at 7 pi over 6 and this one is at 11 pi over 6 and then we can continue to go around and around and around so what that means is that the inside of the sine function that 5 pi t needs to be a 7 pi over 6 plus a multiple of pi or 5 pi t has to be an 11 pi over 6 plus a multiple of 2 pi so in order to solve for t, we will divide by 5 pi on each. That will give us t equals a 7 pi over a 30 pi, which is a 7 over a 30, plus a 2 pi over a 5 pi is a 2 fifths times a k. If we solve this one, we get an 11 over a 30 plus a 2 fifths k. Now we want to choose all the values that are between 0 and 1. So if we look at this, we can let k be 0 and that'll be 7 thirtieths. Well that's between 0 and 1, so that works. If we add a 2 fifths, that's like adding a 12 thirtieths. And a 7 plus a 12 would give me 19 thirtieths, which is actually still less than 1. But if I add another 12 thirtieths, I'm going to be more than 1. So that means I've exhausted all the values that I can get out of this set. Same thing here. I can use 11 thirtieths plus none of those 2 fifths. Or I can do 11 thirtieths plus 12 thirtieths will give me 23 thirtieths, which is still smaller than 1. So I have four values at which the particle is at rest. Last part C, we want to find the position of the particle at any time given a value on the position curve. So in this case, we're going to be going backwards. We know our velocity is a 1 plus a 2 times the sine of 5 pi t. And in order to find the position, we need to take the antiderivative. So we need to answer the question, what did I take the derivative of that gave me these inside values? So the derivative of t will give me the 1. I'll move through the constant. I took the derivative of a negative cosine to get a sine of the inside unchanged 
and then we have to think about the chain rule backwards and instead of multiplying by a 5 pi we're going to divide by a 5 pi. Now this is an antiderivative we want to represent all of the antiderivatives by putting a plus c. Now that we have that c we can use the point to nail it down. So we know that if we plug a 0 in we're going to get a 10 out. So that means I can replace x with a 10 and t with a 0. Cosine of 0 is a 1. So that means my c will be 2 over 5 pi. So my position at any time will be t minus 2 over 5 pi times the cosine of 5 pi t plus a 2 over a 5 pi. Oops, back up. I lost my 10 here. This should be a 10 plus. So I should have an extra 10 in here. Sorry, for some reason I thought that was a 0. So here's my position function for all time. And now let's look at the point breakdown. For part A, we're going to get two points just for taking the derivative and using the chain rule. For part B, which is worth four points, we get one point for writing down that the velocity has to equal zero. We get another point for finding this set of values, and we get another point for this set of values. Actually, we get one point for these together, I lied. And then we get two points for these values of t. So all together we end up with four points on part B. Part C, we want the antiderivative, so we get one point for doing the antiderivative without the plus C. We get another point for the plus C, and we get a third point for solving for C and getting our final answer. So three points for part C, and that's our total of nine.